Hey, this is Jeff, and welcome back to Fallout 4 Roleplaying with the attack key disabled. After consolidating his position in Sanctuary Hills and establishing a protection racket in the nearby settlements, Nasty Nate is on his way to Diamond City to see what kind of business opportunities might be in whatever passes for civilization these days. She's going to die. She needs help. <laughs> that does seem likely. Or were you talking about somebody else? Oh well. What's taking so long? I know I just saw someone out there. This one looked like a good mark, so just shut up and wait! Maybe they went around back. Should we go check the loading dock? Don't be stupid! We got two guys back there. I thought I told you to shut up. But what if... Hey, hey, hey! Told you to stop talking. Say another word, and I will make sure that you don't annoy me ever again. We'll just see how this plays out. Seriously, though, what if... It... Hey! Ah! Hey, what the hell? What? I warned him. Now shut up, and make sure you're ready. Should have just sent me a brochure, pal. Cuz I got no patience for a live demo. You guys get it? Your boss was named Demo, and I killed him. No sense of humor. Okay, there are limits to what the penetrator perk will let you shoot through. All the houses in Sanctuary Hills are blue or yellow. A little variety might be nice. Let's mix up some green. And they said there were some guys by the loading docks. Guess they're outside. You see the last one we tried to pull in with all the grenades? Oh, yeah, I was out doing my rounds. What about him? Well, Becca pulled him into the front of the store, and everything seemed fine, right? He must have got spooked or something, because he suddenly starts throwing grenades everywhere. What? What, what? What'd you guys do? That's the thing. It turns out they weren't grenades at all. They were just rocks. He was making the sounds with his mouth. Pins being pulled all nine yards. <laughs> Fucking nuts. Did you guys take him out? No, we just stood there. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. After he threw about a half a dozen rocks near the back of the store, he started making me. And I'm over encumbered. Again. You know, that amusing anecdote from the recently deceased Raiders brings up an interesting question. In Fallout 3 and New Vegas, you equipped and used grenades like any other weapon, but in Fallout 4 they have a separate hotkey, so there's no way to use them in vats. Nate doesn't have a philosophical problem with grenades, but since I'd have to target and throw them manually, it feels like that would violate my vats only rule. If anybody has strong feelings one way or the other, feel free to post them in the comments, but for now I'm going to assume vats only also means no grenades. 
Anyway, Diamond City's right down the street, so I'm just going to stash the excess on one of these raiders, get a fast travel marker for Diamond City, and then go unload at Sanctuary Hills. Hopefully they won't despawn before I get back. Oh no. Diamond City is Fenway Park. I got a bad feeling about this. Since we're in civilization, let's put on the high charisma outfit, which doesn't look as suave as what I'm already wearing, well, at least on Nate, but never mind. What do you mean you can't open the gate? Stop playing around, Danny. I'm standing out in the open here for crying out loud. I got orders not to let you in, Miss Piper. I'm sorry. I'm just doing my job. Ooh, just doing your job. Protecting Diamond City means keeping me out, is that it? <laughs> oh, look, it's the scary reporter. Boom. I'm sorry, but Mayor McDonough's really steamed, Piper. Saying that article you wrote was all lies. The whole city's in a tizzy. Ugh. You open this gate right now, Danny Sullivan. I live here. You can't just lock me out. <sighs> Damn it, Danny, open up! You. You want into Diamond City, right? I just got here, but yeah. Shh. Play along. What? What's that? You said you're a trader up from Quincy? You have enough supplies to keep the general store stocked for a whole month? <laughs> you hear that, Danny? You gonna open the gate and let us in, or are you gonna be the one talking to Crazy Myrna about losing out on all the supply? Jeez, all right. I need to make it personal, Piper. Give me a minute. Better head inside quick before old Danny catches on to the bluff. You first. Wouldn't have it any other way. Piper, who let you back inside? I told Sullivan to keep that gate shut. You devious, rabble-rousing slanderer. The level of dishonesty in that paper of yours. I'll have that printer scrap for parts. Mr. McDonough, tyrant mayor shuts down the press. Why don't we ask the newcomer? You support the news? Because the mayor's threatened to throw free speech in the dumpster. Eh, I, I always believed in freedom of the press. You know, ran into trouble with some, um, you know, corrupt cops or something. Oh, I didn't mean to bring you into this argument, good sir. No, no, no. You look like Diamond City material. Welcome to the great green jewel of the Commonwealth. Safe. Happy? A fine place to come. Spend your money. Settle down. Don't let this muckraker here tell you otherwise, all right? Whatever. I'm not gonna be here that long. Ugh, another see no evil type. You'll fit in just fine with all the inept guards. <laughs> now, was there anything particular you came to our city for? What is this place anyway? Why, this is the safest place in all the Commonwealth, with the strongest community and the highest standards of living available. We have stores, doctors, schools, power, running water, and the wall as our sacred protector. You'll learn more about the wall soon, I'm sure. But I was talking about you. Come on now, what brought you all the way out here? Yeah, that's not really any of your business. Well, whatever you do, don't bother going to Diamond City Security for help. I've had enough of this, Piper. From now on, consider you and that little sister of yours on notice. Yeah, keep talking, McDonough. That's all you're good for. Right. <laughs> hmm, a big Diamond City welcome from the mayor. You feel honored yet? Look, I gotta go get settled in, but, um, stop by my office later. I have an idea for an article you'd be perfect for. Inept guards and citizens that look the other way? Maybe this place ain't so bad after all.
This is it. Home plate. We finally really did it. You maniacs. You blew it up. Ah, damn you. Damn you all to hell. <clears throat> uh, yeah, sorry, folks. Got a little sentimental there for a second. The ironic thing is, I put down ten grand that Murtaugh would throw less than six innings, because I figured he was going to get shelled. If my bookie was still alive, I would collect. Glad you dropped by. You holding up, Blue? Yeah, my favorite ballpark's become a shanty town. Today's been great. Interesting you mentioning that, seeing as you're from a vault. Yeah, you're not wearing the blue jumpsuit right now, but the pit boy and that fish out of water look? Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. Here's your headline. Local man says no. Gonna be like that, huh? <sighs> Smart ass. Fine. We'll do this later, but I want that interview, got me? Yeah, I'm kidding. You ready for that interview now, Blue? What kind of interview is this gonna be? I ask you who you are, get your opinion on life out there, and maybe load up a few tough questions and keep it interesting. What do you say? All right, why not? Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? Uh, time on the inside's got kind of a negative connotation for me, uh... Let's not use that term no more. Uh, besides, that's not really important. I'm here now, ain't I? I told you, this is a perspective piece. People in Diamond City need to know you're from a different world than them. So, what was the vault like? Yeah, we was frozen. I didn't really spend all that much time in it. W wait <laughs> They boxed you up in a fridge? The whole time? Are you saying you were alive before the war? Yeah, I'm over 200 years old. Can you believe it? Oh my god. The man out of time. So, you've seen the Commonwealth, Diamond City. How does it compare to your old life? I don't know. I've been having too much fun blowing shit up to think about it. Gotta make my job hard for me, huh? All right, if that's the quote, that's the quote. Now the uh, big question. Why come to Diamond City? You're looking for someone, aren't you? Who is it? You head wrong. I'm not looking for anyone. Don't lie to me, Blue. This is your story. Don't you want people to know the truth? All right. They kidnapped my kid. Add 200 years of interest to my bank account, I'm a billionaire. But I don't see no banks or stockbrokers around, and I ain't received a ransom note, so there had to be some other reason he's worth something to him. You relieve me of a liability, you're welcome to it. You steal my assets, you can start counting the breaths you got left. The parent after the missing child. As heartbreaking today as it ever was. Tell me, do you suspect the Institute's involved? The who? The Institute? Who are they? That, Blue, is the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth. No one really knows who or where they are, but their handiwork is all over. Synths. Synthetic people. Sent from their hidden labs to do the Institute's dirty work. Sometimes they even replace a person with a synth double. A little covert agent no one would ever suspect. Now... Not everything that goes wrong has the Institute behind it, but there's always a chance. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, sounds like they'd have the resources to do it. Sounds like they might be. Not even a baby is safe from them. And people wonder why I can't just look the other way. 
For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? Find out who's responsible and make them pay. Simple as that. I'll take anger over apathy any day. Good quote. Thanks, Blue. That's everything. It's gonna take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is gonna give Diamond City plenty to talk about. Look, about your son. I didn't know if you were on the up and up before, didn't want to waste my friend's time, but I think he can help you. His name's Nick Valentine, a detective extraordinaire. Got an office here in Diamond City. Just look for the neon sign with the heart in it. Neon sign with the heart? You sure he's not running a brothel? <laughs> that would be hilarious, but no. No, Blue, he's on the up and up. Anyway, I agreed to come with you, right? Watch your back. Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where the story goes next. Or, uh, you know, let's not and say we did. Myself. Hey, there's and a bar in the old theater there. district that's parade that's only. Just it, that's Johnny, combat you zone. Wouldn't be able to tell I'd stay clear if I was you. If you Nick McDonald, combat zone, razor, huh? Bleed. Sounds like my kind Don't of place. Nothing. Hmm. The one thing first. Long fly ball to left. Nate goes back. He's at the one in track. He makes the catch. The wall keeps out the bad guys, so I appreciate you not messing her up none. Thinking you need a little education. Maybe a bit of community service. What do you say? Yeah, community service has got a kind of bad connotation with me, but, uh... Yeah, I'd be happy to help out. It's the green monster, after all. You see this paint I'm using? Only one place left in the whole Commonwealth you can get it. Hardware Town. Rune store close by to the west. Bring back a can of paint, and it'll be a hundred caps in your pocket. How's that sound? I don't know. I'm kind of new around here. Ain't got the hang of this caps thing, but uh, that sounds kind of low. Fine. Pay you 125 caps. I don't know. I think you can do better than that. Driving a hard bargain, huh? 150 caps. <laughs> Actually, I already got some paint right here. Well, ain't that the end all be all? Why don't you go ahead and put a little of that paint on the wall? See what I got to work with. Are you kidding me? We'll use green paint, of course. There's your payment, and a little bonus for getting the right shade of green. Don't do anything with it I wouldn't do. All right, I'll spare you the ordeal of me schlepping everything from Hardware Town back to Sanctuary Hills, and meet you at Valentine's Detective Agency. Another stray coming in from the rain. Afraid you're too late. Office is closed. I didn't come here to get brushed off. Well, you can take a seat and wait for the next Armageddon. Because the detective ain't coming back. He's gone missing. Picture on milk cotton time. If only it was that simple, right? <laughs> Nick disappeared working a case. Skinny Malone's gang had kidnapped a young woman and he tracked them down to their hideout in Park Street Station. There's an old vault down there they use as a base. I told Nick he was walking into a trap, but he just smiled and walked out the door like he always does. Hey, I'd love to help, but there's the small matter of expenses. Money, huh. I, I do have 125 caps in the old rainy day fund. Come on, this is your boss's life we're talking about here. Fine, we'll make it 150 caps. Alright, so who's the Skinny Malone character? I don't know much about him, but he's from Good Neighbor, and that means he's in the well-pressed suits and machine gun school of thuggery. Yeah, I've known a few people like that. Said he's from Good Neighbor? What's that? Yeah, it's a tough neighborhood. Northeast a ways. 
People with power there care about two things, style and body count. Well, there's another place I'm going to have to visit. All right, I'll find them for you. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. He's always wearing that old hat and trench coat getup. Please, hurry. But before I do any of that, I got some punks to whack for them cuties at Oberlin Station. It shouldn't be hard. Someone there? Oh. Hello. This is like the second time ever I caught an enemy sleeping. I thought about taking the Mr. Sandman perk a couple of times because it lets you insta-kill sleeping characters and gives you bonus damage on sneak attacks. Not that it really mattered there. And I'm over-encumbered again. Well, you know the drill. I'll finish looting, stash the excess in a container near the entrance and make two trips. Anyway, I will take Mr. Sandman eventually because it stacks with Ninja, but the sneak attack bonus for Ninja is higher, which is why I took it first. Oh, uh, Grognak comic. I doubt I'll ever use melee weapons, but I'll take it. Well, this is interesting. Apparently one of those raiders had a submachine gun, and I can make a silencer for it. I don't know if the bonuses are applied per bullet like they were in Fallout 3, but I'm going to find out. And I might as well make it as powerful as I can before I test it. I still don't have a ton of adhesive, but I have plenty for this, and the farm is this close to making a sustainable supply of vegetable starch, so pretty soon adhesive won't be a problem at all anymore. You hear about that farm run by ghouls? Isn't that something? Hey there. I persuaded those punks to leave you alone. Really? Well, that's the best news I've heard in a long time. By the way, help yourself to the workshop over there. We'd be glad to consider you a friend. Uh, you do mean that in the, uh, friends with benefits way, right? Oh, we're going upstairs right now. 
That works for me. I could take Commando for more damage with a submachine gun, but my carry capacity is pathetic, and I don't even know if it's going to be worth the extra weight yet. SBD is going to be my go-to gun for the foreseeable future anyway, so I'm going to take another rank of Gunslinger. Not only do I get another 20% boost in damage, but it increases the maximum range for pistols. Ordinarily, I'd lean towards sniper rifles, but since I can't use a scope, the real limiting factor is going to be the distance you can target in VATS. Well, after that romantic interlude with the Grateful Settlers, I'm going to call it a day, and we'll go rescue Nick Valentine next week. See you then.